those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home-cooked specials and has a very diverse selection. And patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars. And for those sports enthusiasts out there, we have the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena. And there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe. Our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Lax or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott and east and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays 
with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with a diving jump. Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott Neese and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and will often become regular so for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, 
Spaghetti, whatever you want, guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come nonstop action. Get your team registered for there. If you've never seen it before, we've got the last two years hosted team USA was there last year, trying to get ready for the world games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for blue squash productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by blaze. It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16. Will be just a few moments, folks. May North men are putting on their white jerseys. They're a little too close to the purple, and with that, we get some number changes and a few things that happen, and they are taking care of it right now. So we will be underway in a couple of minutes. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. This is the bronze game. Winner plays this afternoon. If the Northmen win, that will be three games today. They just played against the Yeti in a very close game, came right down to the end. I'll be interested to see how they do towards the end of this game. They might do all right at the beginning, but come the second half of the second period and that third period, it'll be interesting. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. Steven Stamp will be with you in a couple of minutes. A lot of the roster and jersey changes. Stamp is going to be a couple of minutes late, and then Stamper will be on in a little bit. But this is going to be a super exciting game. Like I said, May Northman traveled a long ways. We're just in a very tough game. It's going to be a tough uh, bronze medal game. Huge shout out to Kyle Baker, one of those guys who does a lot for the league, has the team, organizes things, gets the men down here. The GMs don't get a lot of credit. They really. Uh, have one of those jobs that's that's well hidden from everybody. It's a thankless job almost in a lot of ways. Huge thank you to the custodial staff here. I tell you, the arena here is absolutely amazing. I love it. It's always so clean. They take care of us greatly. I, they, the food at the Power Play Cafe is next level, really. They even delivered it to me, super excited. Opening pace off, and possession goes to nobody. It's into the corner. Brendan Murphy able to pick it up. He comes around the crease, rips the shot, and a big save by CTC to start us off. As they come up the offensive side of the floor. I know that's Cam Seneca, and he throws it up top. That looks like Papineau, I believe. Now low, 45, coming in. Oh, nice couple of moves, loses that. Ball's thrown up top. Cathers picks it up, I know Cree. On the far side, a rip goes just outside. 
Cathers picks it up, throws it into Seneca. Seneca takes a shot. This is just why. He just stops the ball. You're allowed to stop it. You're not allowed to push it. And with you now is Steven Stamp. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. It's just uh, getting the update. Maine switched to their uh, white jerseys, uh, same as they wore in the round robin play. And here's a chance for Nelson Jones. He'll spin and shoot. Nice stop there. That is Tucker Lavasseur between the pipes. And uh, we'll get into that story in just a moment. But, yeah, the, the black jerseys for Maine were considered too close to the black for the CTC, so Maine has switched over to their whites. And they're the same. this is the same combination of colors that they had when they played the uh, round robin game, which CTC Elite won 12 to six. So obviously CTC are the favorites here in this bronze medal game. Sterling Claflin looking for the long bomb pass. That is not gonna get to Nelson Jones and Lavasseur pulls it down. So the, uh, I know that's why I said Lavasseur. <laughs> I've called him Tucker Lavasseur twice. I, yeah, no, I actually had it. Oh, penalty coming to CTC. I think it's going to be Jones with a slash behind the play. Main rips a shot. That's Cal Baker taking that one. And the power play will come out. Yeah, the slashing call. Six blocks, two so, minute slash. Main with the first opportunity. Tucker Lavasseur is a high school player. He's going to be going to OCC next year. He uh, has fallen in love with the box game, and he is coming in because Brian Duncan was saying, he said, you might see Tucker next game because I'm broken. He said he uh, managed to get through the last game, but he said when he stood up at the end of it, his back basically kind of snapped on him, and he was not up to getting back out. He's on the bench running the D-door. I suppose ready for an emergency situation, but Tucker Lavasseur thrown into the cauldron. He loves the game. Let's see how he handles the pressure. Hard outside shot from Kyle Baker, and that goes in. Cam Seneca was taken off down the floor, looked back for an outlet pass. It was not there because that one snuck through Kobe Gibson. And I think it's interesting to look at this as, as that power play goal puts the Northmen out front and see... Obviously, we were saying CTC favored. They won 12-6 in the round robin. That game was close for a while. And then the thing is, Maine, I know they just played a game, but they're shorter games. They're warmed up. They're ready to go. They're on. They're, they're loose and limber and ready to play. And CTC is coming in after a few games, you know, three games, four games during the weekend and trying to get ready to roll, and it's harder to get going. I like Maine's chances early on to be very competitive. We'll see as CTC loosens up how they handle things. Baker's goal has given them the early lead, the Northman that is. Josh Jordan reaching into the crease, can't do that. And here comes CTC. Trace Hill takes this ball. It's on the floor, scooped up by Len Dubay. Nice bouncer to clear the zone. And Gus Eisenman steps across center. There's Brendan Murphy. I had a chat with him between games, and he said, I asked him how his chin is because he's leaking a little bit. And he said, yeah, as long as it doesn't break open and start bleeding during the game, I'm okay. He's got a uh, butterfly bandage on. He said, he's got, oh, what a shot from outside. We'll get back to that one. Josh Jordan had himself a big game in the play-in game for this bronze medal. And that is a blast from downtown. That's Caitlin Clark territory. And he is fired up about that one. So, 2 nothing Northman. Shane Cook brings it up over center. Lobs it across. Nazir Tingling almost got there. He did disrupt Creek Hathers enough that the ball goes into the bench. <clears throat> well, a rusty gate check there. Creek Hathers not called for it. They don't always like that. We do have a three-man officiating crew for the bronze and gold medal games. 
two of them still mic'd up, so we will hear some calls uh, being announced. You will anyway. I won't. I don't hear them on my headset, but you guys get to hear them. And Greg lets me know if they say anything interesting. Another penalty coming to CTC. They are not helping their cause, trying to get rolling by taking these penalties. That's going to be Matthew Mahalik going to the box. It's a slashing call once again. And Maine looking to extend this lead. Picked up by Simpson. He's taken off. He and Baker. That is a couple of veterans with a lot of talent who can both play. Oh, Baker snaps his stick. There's some help from Eisenman. Simpson steps in the crease. That's going to be main possession. And that's a heck of an effort by Kyle Baker, the main captain, because he is not a defensive player. He is an offensive guy, but he goes back. He's willing to play D, but the shaft snapped, and it's not a clean break. You can see it was, it was basically a weapon once it snapped. You can see from here the, the angle that it broke at. We have to drop that, play D without the stick, which is very hard to do, and Cam Simpson so strong. That one almost rolls in. Kobe Gibson just gets his foot on it after C.J. Labreck got a shot down low. Oh, there's a check from behind. No call, and that leads to a goal. That is just a rocket from the point. Sterling Claflin. I'm curious if Claflin puts something around after he has his jersey on if he puts his kidney pads on after his jersey or something, because they're always, his jersey's always caught up. I thought it was like, it got tucked sometimes. But it's always up there, isn't it? Okay, it's cool, it's cool. Claflin with the goal, short-handed marker for CTC. When play resumes, Mahalik will be released. The Northmen get it, oh my, Mahalik. It's going to go straight back to his seat. It's a charging call. There's a lot of things you could call this. but Mahalik doesn't like it because he comes in. He thinks it's a clean check. It, it does get it in the shoulder. I mean, it's in the shoulder. It's actually, I mean, it's actually not a bad hit when you watch it again. I thought at first it might have been up around the neck, but that's, that's a pretty good hit. But farther behind. Maybe. Again, full speed, it looked, I thought it looked like a penalty, so I don't, I'm not surprised at the call. I, on the replay, I thought it looked okay, but again, we have a chance to see that that other people don't, and we have a chance to see Josh Jordan burying again. I am loving his celebrations because it's such a muted kind of, yes. Not anything big flamboyant, he's just like, yes. He's starting to believe, he's feeling it, that is another great rip, goes down under, and it's three to one, another power play goal for the main Northman. I hear myself. Okay. Now I know what it sounds like, folks. <laughs> Greg was just, Greg Beach was just checking the volume on his phone, and I thought, I heard, heard somebody talking over here. I thought maybe it was the radio. It was actually his phone, and it was me calling the play. I was like, wait, that sounds familiar. CTC into the offensive zone. There's Nelson Jones. He'll hand it off. Creek Hathers, seeing what he's got. Jones all alone. Oh, what a save. Tucker Lavasser, the youngster, looking pretty comfortable so far. Now, he's going to face some challenges from the likes of Jones and Cam Simpson and Cam Seneca and Creek Hathers. There's a lot of talent. There's the point. Ball is knocked loose. And CTC comes away with it. Jones will just lob it up to Simpson coming from the bench. One more CTC player coming out. That was Tommy Costanza gets that pass. I think Costanza changed helmets. Maybe not, maybe not. 
That one I think was wider than that. Not sure if Lavasseur got his stick on it. It did not, so it's down to eight seconds on the shot clock. There's a save, and Lavasseur makes the stop. That's not a bad little outlet pass to Eisenman, who does a great job snagging it with one hand, fights through. What a play by Gus Eisenman. And now Baker, oh, you gotta make that pass. There you go. Okay, Josh Jordan, I take it back. That was a good idea to wait for a second. Baker just misses on the backdoor quick stick. Now Brendan Murphy with some footwork to get free of Mahalik. Lebrecht kind of tapped it ahead almost to himself. Murphy will run back and he'll be on Sterling Claflin and Jordan with the big swinging check. Main lost track of one of the CTC players, but they have got him covered now. Len Dubé is over there. Delayed penalty coming to Main. Sterling Claflin is arguing. I'm not sure what he's saying because the penalty's already coming. Maybe saying, call another one, call him now. Jones gets by, shoots, scores. Nice job by Jones to just slough off the check and drive to the net, and that is a beauty. Oh yeah, just a little skimmer. Board jump celebration. Didn't get a lot of vertical, a lot of height on the board jump celly, so we'll have to deduct a couple of points for that, but the goal itself was lovely. It's three to two. Maine hanging on to their lead. Lane comes away with possession. That ball bounces up out of play off of, off of Rick Murray. Oh, nice save by Lava, sir. You can tell he's been watching Brian Duncan. Similar style, playing that really acrobatic approach. Now, CTC is going to adjust, and you got to restrain your response to fakes. There's another save, because they'll get you going. Cam Simpson, for one. Guys like that will throw a million fakes. That's a great outlet pass, though, to get it ahead to Eisenman. Oh, nice attempt on the back door. Doesn't quite work out. Brendan Murphy kind of bent over, wound up taking a bit of a stick in the head. It wasn't an intent, I don't think. Fresh 30 for the Northmen. Come into the final minute of this first period. Blasted from way outside. That actually broke Sterling Claflin's stick. There's a couple of sticks on the floor. Claflin goes straight to the bench because there's already one defender for CTC without a stick. That's Trevor Jones. Oh, that's some substantial slashes by Josh Jordan. Brody the Born didn't like it. Uh, Josh Jordan gives the wave goodbye. I don't know, Jordan's going to get something here as well, I would think. He should have got a slash. I mean, two huge whacks. LeBorn hated it, and they're throwing LeBorn out of the game. There you see the slashes, and LeBorn is going to react to it. Yeah, the CTC has given it to Josh Jordan. I'm not sure if he's been kicked out as well or. Yeah, I think Jordan's gone as well. I think that's probably the right decision in that one. And Brendan Murphy just went into the main locker room as well. So he might be just re re-upping another butterfly band-aid or something. They're gonna need Murphy. Um, yeah, he's coming back. He just 
I mean, it was just grabbing something, maybe a spare stick or something, but he's on his way back. But Jordan is out, LeBourne is out. Whew, that makes things interesting. I think Maine, as everything's getting sorted out, Maine is going to suffer because Jordan's been a big part. He's got the two goals. He's been a big part of the offense. And they've just, just played a game already this morning. They need those extra legs. Um, Brody LeBourne's definitely a better player. I mean, he's a... He's a difference-making defender, so that hurts CTC. So LeBourne getting a major, and I, I would imagine Jordan did as well. We'll see. There's just the major up right now. I was going to say Maine's got five guys on the floor. They've actually got six guys on the floor. Okay, there's five. So four on the floor for CTC. So it is just the only penalty affecting the manpower is the major to LeBourne. Maine gets it. Lebrecht, pass to Baker. He's going to peel back. No angle. Didn't have the shooting lane. Oh, and Lebrecht is gimping. He looks like he's hurt his left ankle. <laughs> he has to bend over and get his stick that was swatted out of his hands as he was going to the bench. Boy, that's tough. And Lebrecht with a huge smash of the stick down onto the bench. He is frustrated. Oh. Now, Josh Jordan has come back to the bench. Interesting. Maybe he wasn't tossed out. He went down the hallway. I assumed he was he was kicked out, but he didn't even get a penalty. Wow. Okay. So that obviously helps them, but it's going to be CTC getting on the board here again, tying it up on this shorthanded marker. A little skipper from the outside. That one ripped. Is that Doug Hemming with the shot? Here's Costanza throwing it across. Oh, Nelson Jones. That makes sense. That makes more sense. Okay, Nelson Jones gets the pass. Doesn't bother to get over to his own side. He just takes a shot. And that's the thing. Tucker Lavasseur has looked great. For a young goalie who's barely played box, fall in love with it. But he's a young goalie, very new to the game. You want to test him early and often. Kyle Dolan got in the way of that pass, but it is tracked down by Seneca, by uh, Camp Seneca of CTC. Coming down, Kyle Baker. Oh, what a big save. I believe that's Kobe Gibson on the save, sorry. Didn't know 100%, but he's on a break. Coming down, looking. Draws it back. Sorry, I have uh, no name, so unless I watched you enough tonight. Yeah, I'm good to go. Thanks, Greg. Just getting an update on the... Uh, on the roster, Scalia Ray Papineau actually playing for CTC. We're number 35. Good to see him back on the floor. Haven't seen Scalia Day play for a while. Ball is loose. Dolan will go and get it. Shovels it ahead. Gets to Nazir Tingling, who's gone from wearing the number three to wearing nothing but white. And now he's going to take a slash. And I thought they were just going to keep playing. No, he's got to go to the box. He's a little surprised Nazir Tingling, but that was a big swat with the stick. Number 17 there on your screen. Oh, here we're watching the replay. Well, it's coming right here, tingling one hand. Two minutes right, right there. Slashing. Oh yeah, that's a slash. Yeah, you can't take the big one-handed chop. It's frowned upon. So that will even things up at four on four for a minute and a half, and then there'll actually be a 30-second power play for CTC at the end of it. P 
Pierce Smith is serving the penalty for Brody LeBorn. It's a shame, I'd like to see Brody just maintain his composure a bit more, but I get it. He took a couple of big whacks. It's a bronze medal game though, man. Costanza with a shot, and that's a great save by Tucker Lavasseur. We said he's gonna have some challenges as a young, new goalie. He is also showing that he's got some skill and he stayed with that hidden ball trick very well. Was all over Cam Seneca. Forced Seneca to try and be perfect. Seneca pings it off the post crossbar meeting. Or the cross as folks like to call it. Here's Brendan Murphy. Finally gets the ball and tucks it home. What a composed play by Brendan Murphy. To He takes so long to get a contain, control of this ball. And he jumps up. Now. Honestly, it does look like a crease violation to me because it's a cylinder, it's the cylinder call. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely in. But that hasn't been called all the time, all weekend, so. So CTC is actually on the power play now. Baker takes this pass. Five left on the penalty for Maine. And then Tingling will be released. So Jack Anzalone with it. Plays for the Capital Region Axeman up in Ottawa. Simpson with it, the pass ahead doesn't connect with Stout, but Stout, oh, that one's not connect, gonna connect either. It went over to the far side. And Trevor Hill tried to make the pass through, just couldn't quite connect. He just connect a lot. That one doesn't get caught. Scalewade Papineau couldn't quite come up with it. Here's Nelson Jones. He's thinking about firing, he will save. And we're gonna have a penalty. Holding call to Maine. That's uh, going to send CTC to the power play. Eisenman, Gus Eisenman with the two or less for holding. Swite, two minutes hold. What did you do? Greg Beecher is a wizard. The man behind Blue Squatch Productions, along with the woman behind Blue Squatch Productions, Charity Beecher. I was trying to remember Charity's last name, and it shouldn't be that hard because it's the same as yours. Um, anyway, Craig has got me hooked up so I can hear the referees. Power play. Here's a chance. Oh, nice save, Lavasseur. So we've got 23 minutes left in this game, and who, who knows what's going to happen. But for me right now, Tucker Lavasseur is the player of the game. He has been just terrific. Baker has it. Got a man coming off the bench, he's gonna shoot. Oh, it just about snuck through. Kobe Gibson, it hit his the inside of his foot and as he stepped across, he kind of kicked it away. That may have rolled in. Nice jump shoot shot attempt by J Nelson Jones. Nelson Jones is saying it went off the post and out of place so they should get the ball, but Jones had a crease violation. So it's gonna be main possession. Lavasseur will leave her for Dubé. Outlet pass to Blake Foglio. Thirty-three seconds left on the penalty. Nice job by Josh Jordan to get it. Boy, he likes to interact with the opponents. I, I'm honestly, I thought he'd been kicked out. Which, oh, here's a break by by uh, Rick Murray. That one stopped. And I thought, oh, maybe ejection's a bit much, but I can't believe he didn't get anything for the slashes or the taunting. NFL, they'd be, they'd be taking your firstborn if you waved at a guy like that after he took a penalty. Here's Cree Cathers. Hard shot, another save by Lavasseur. That went off of Trevor Hill. Pass is picked off though, this is trouble. Back door, yeah, that's gonna happen. 
Maine had the ball, start breaking up the floor, and they just throw this pass ill-advisedly, trying to get by a CTC player, and that is just not going to work out. Yeah, that's Tommy Costanza who slipped off the check. He was one of the four checkers that, that put the pressure on and caused that pass to go errant. And then they pick it off. Costanza winds up as the recipient of the uh, fortune from that was caused by their hard work. Dan Rogers taking the draw here for CTC. Great to see him back on the floor. A little surprised not to see him play with the Woody. I haven't seen him play for a bit, but he used to have the Woody going all the time. Dan, a really solid defender slash faceoff guy. A lot of time with the underdog of Red Hawks. Here's Creek Cathers, another Red Hawk. Cam Simpson, another Red Hawk. And that one's through. Lavasseur, very active. And that cost him a little bit there as he comes flying across. Simpson finds the hole. And it feels a bit inevitable at this point that CTC is going to find some gaps. They're going to find some ways around the young goalie. But what a performance he has done so far. And you never know. He seems pretty resourceful. Here's a chance for Baker, scores! Ties it right back up, off the faceoff. Kyle Baker so precise with that shot. Is it not amazing how loud the footsteps of children can be on the floor or down by the boards? There's just a couple of kids running back and forth. Every once in a while, I feel it sounds like there's an earthquake coming, and they're just having fun. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just it's a little surprising, the uh, the reverberation that can happen. But they are having a blast, as is everyone watching this game. It's a 5-5 tie with four minutes to go, and that is going to be a penalty. You see a little hesitation on the official, but he threw the hand up, and I think Sterling Claflin knows that that was a hold. Yeah. So Maine, back, holding. back to the... Oh, sorry. I was speaking over the ref. Okay. You're all over it. So holding call. Maine's just waiting to get everybody out there. And Azir Tingling comes out for the power play. Not somebody we usually see on their man advantage. <clears throat> Jordan up to Baker. He's got Kyle Dolan with him. Wondering. That one's wide. It's going to be an over and back. The 30 seconds was expiring anyway. Maine, I... I not sure, I haven't seen, uh, normally they would have Jack Anzalone on the power play. He is not out there. I wonder if he is available at this point. Boy, their bench is getting short right now. They've got, they've got like seven, six guys, six runners wearing their gear. CJ Lebrec. Okay, yeah, somebody else just went into the locker room. So Maine in tough shape here. They're having to figure out just how to get enough guys for a power play. That's a too many men call on Maine. As Josh Shorten was a little early coming out of the bench. He's screaming that there were three defenders coming, but he must have gone before they got to the bench, the change box. Thirty-three left on the power play, so they still have a chance to try and make something happen here, but they're really kind of stringing things together. And throwing a pass like that isn't going to help. Lenda Base had a really strong tournament, but that was just not on target. But that's going to be a possession. Maine only had four defenders out. That's such, so yeah. Oh, so that's why George Joshua came out. Maine only had four defenders on the floor. They might have thought they were shorthanded, so it probably shouldn't have been called. Luckily, it's just a possession call, not a penalty. Baker shovels it over. Hard rip there from Anzalone. Anzalone, so good to see him. 
can Sterling Claflin get that ball? Not before he gets a chance to shoot. And now it's loose and gets away. And it's going to be a race for it. Foglio tries to get it. Tries to get it again. Cam Seneca almost had it. They're going to call a uh, loose ball foul for sure on that one. And CTC will get it. Trevor Hill turned back around. Here's Dan Rogers into the final minute of the second. Nelson Jones. Hard shot from Trevor Hill. Jones picks it up. Oh, what a save. Tucker Lavasser. Spins around and dives after that ball. Love that enthusiasm. Might want to learn to channel it a little bit, but that is some great effort from Tucker Lavasser. And the Northmen come up into the offensive zone. 20 on the shot clock, 30 on the game clock. Oh, now they're going to have time to set up for last shot if they want, because that one went up and out of play. And will they, Lavasser's staying there. They're not going to have him head out. I don't know if they even have six offensive guys at this point anyway. That pass almost hit the face mask of Trevor Jones. Just drifts by. It's picked up by Mitch, uh, by Pierce Smith. Five seconds. Oh, that's a great play late in the shot clock. What patience and awareness by CTC to get the go-ahead goal. See, it's lobbed ahead. Nelson Jones knows he has time. Gets it to the far side. That one's tucked in. Was that Scaliwide? Papineau, got 35. 28, Jaden Stout takes the pass from Nelson Jones, and we need to get the second assist. That was a really nice pass up. Anyway, we're through two periods. It's 6-5 to five for C to C Elite over the main Northmen. Northmen are being very gritty. We'll see what happens when we come back to the, I was going to say to the Blue Squatch Invitational on Northeast Productions, but it's the other way around, the Northeast Invitational on Blue Squatch Productions. We'll be right back. That is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe. Our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the theonondaganationsarena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Black Snye or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott and east and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away. Welcome back to Lacrosse Friends. 15 minutes to decide a bronze medalist and I actually need to double check on the amount of prize money. What are the prizes? Do you know, Greg? Greg doesn't know. We'll double check. I should have got that before the game. But there is some money on stake, on the line at stake. Kyle Dolan pulls his way up over center, shelves the pass ahead. Here's Gus Eisenman and Nazir Tingling. Triple team defense. Baker goes to try and grab it. C 
CTC. Hidden ball trick, but they know that Costanza still has it. Far side to Nelson Jones. Tried to feed it through to Jaden Stout. That one didn't, didn't get to him. They've got six left to get a shot off. Stout gets it. The ball did wind up with him eventually. He fights his way through the defensive coverage and bounces that one home. Nice job to shoot over his teammate using Mitch White as a screen. Seven to five, CTC pulls ahead. I don't know, I, I have a lot of faith in this Northman team to keep competing and to keep working, but it sure feels like CTC has the momentum and has the stamina and the freshness at this point. You just look at that Northman bench, they have six runners to spare. They've had some, they've been decimated by injuries. It's gonna be hard to, to pull it together here, but, but we'll see what they can do. Costanza pulls it down. Backdoor pass, nice save Levisseur. That one's a little bit too far for Josh Jordan. The Len Dubay shot pass just a bit far. Here's Papineau. Trying to run a give and go with Trevor Hill. The pass back wasn't there, so Hill went to the far side. Now he gets the return. Lavasseur with the save. Oh, it's swatted away. Actually knocked it away from Foglio. I think uh, Jack Anzalone was trying to just get it cleared and actually wound up knocking it away from his teammate. Oh, what a goal. Does that one count? It does. Trevor Hill saved that one. We'll send that to ESPN with the Al Snow goal from earlier. Wow. Nice spin, nice shovel, great proprioception. What a job to know where he is, what he's doing, and what is, oh my goodness, that's just amazing. Eight five, Dan Rogers, Jack Anzalone, out for the faceoff. Here's Brendan Murphy. He's going to fire it. Stopped by Cody Gib Kobe Gibson. Pierce Smith takes off, and it's going to be main ball on a loose ball violation. Kyle Dolan wearing, take, wearing the 87 up top. He's going to take this pass. He's up for some offensive shifts. Well, that was creative. <laughs> Not sure it was necessary to go one-handed, but it looked pretty cool. Almost went in. Jordan protects himself well to get that, protects his well with the body to get that pass. Rick Murray senses Creek Hathers coming. Hands it off to Brendan Murphy. Here's Jordan. Oh, almost an interception. And now he is up there. That's close to back in. Sterling Claflin whips it behind the back. Gets it ahead to Mitch White, who's not going to have time to get back for a shot, but he is going to be able to pass it to, Mitch, to Pierce Smith. That shot was blocked out front. I believe that was Wivoga Shenandoah getting in the way. Illegal pick and CTC will get the ball. Nelson Jones is just going to trot over towards us while he waits for everyone to get out there. Jones still has it. They're aware. Yeah, Lavasur sees it. Through to Costanza. Backdoor attempt. Right on top. Jones, no good. Crease violation. Brendan Murphy steps over center, spins away from the check by Trevor Hill. Still has the ball. Baker trying to set a pick for him. Drive underneath by Jordan. He was flying into the crease. Papineau 
Over to Creek Hathers. Illegal pick. Maine trails by three. They've got nine minutes to get those back and they have the ball. Main setting up in the offensive zone. Here's a shot from the outside late in the shot clock. And it will be CTPC possession. See somebody asking about the Woodsman game. Uh, the Woodsman, after their actions in the semifinal yesterday, were removed from the tournament. So Maine and Utica actually played a play-in game this morning to get into this bronze medal game. Maine won that one, a thriller in overtime. No, it wasn't overtime, right? Yeah, it was overtime. Overtime, a 12-11 win, I think. Oh, there's a shot from Costanza. He finds that bottom corner, just sneaks it past Lavasseur. That's nine to five. So yeah, the Woodsmen were removed from the tournament. Don't imagine they're gonna be welcoming a lot of tournaments down the road. And down to the right in the corner, the uh, down by the main dressing room, it's pretty much the medical staff is down having a convention. And that's gonna be a penalty on that collision along the boards. CTC's players down on the floor. Oh yeah. He's gotta be careful about along the boards. I don't think there was a lot of ill intent there, but for sure, a lack of caution. It's from behind. With a, a check from behind. I remember when I was helping coach the Peterborough senior women's team and uh, had one player, she was great, she was very new to the game, very physical. I think she's a firefighter at this point. And uh, she loved to get out and play a nice, rough, physical game. And we loved it. I was like, yes, do it, do it. But she also, it took her a while to remember to not hit somebody in the numbers when they're close to the boards. And you just have to reinforce that over and over. Along the boards, you gotta be careful. It's just too dangerous. Cam Simpson with the rip. Another great save by Lavasseur. It's gonna be a five second count. Yeah, I think it's nine five. Isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, just having a side conversation with Greg Beecher here. Nelson Jones fakes it. Simpson back to Jones. Oh, rocket. Low to high. Nelson Jones. Such a smooth stroke. Look at this. It's not like a huge windup. It's not like a huge fall. It's just smooth. Right now we're just seeing him celebrate. Here we go. Sorry, I shouldn't give you a hard time. Simpson back to Jones. Oh, that's beautiful. So that'll be the first, that'll wipe out the first half of the double minor. Which means that Peyton Van Bibber will be in for two minutes or less now for the second half of his checking from behind. Simpson throws it down into the corner. He's going to get it back. Over to the recent goal scorer, Jones. That one was tipped away by Trevor Hill. It was going to Clap Claflin. Maine gets it. Oh, Lenti Bay just ices it. And Maine is in penalty kill mode. They're also kind of in survival mode at this point, late in the game. A lot of lacrosse for the weekend. You want to play a lot of games. Uh, you don't want to travel and not get a lot of chances. Oh, nice save, Lavasseur. But at some point, it, uh, it can catch up. And especially you get a bunch of guys hurt, it can just take a toll. And I think I think Maine's pretty tuckered at this point. Game, valiant effort, though. It was a great game this morning between Maine and the Utica Yeti. There's a hard rip from Costanza. Gonna roll all the way around to Simpson. 15 on the shot clock for CTC. Back to our pass. 
It's a nice fake by Jones, gets it over to Trevor Hill, but Hill misses. Then Jones rips one himself. It's swatted away by Anzalone. Brendan Murphy has it. He's take. oh, he didn't have it. It looked like he did. That's gonna be an illegal check. And yeah, I think it'll be a penalty for Trevor Hill. He's saying shoulder to body, shoulder to body. But vulnerable position, didn't have possession. Two minutes, block, Argent. Exists in the cross. Okay, is it? Yeah. I don't know. There's lots of different. I mean, lots of different penalties on the books. Oh, that one's gonna get away. Either way, that's you just can't do it. You just can't run over the guy like that. Dan Rogers. Oh, nice try. CTC will have possession. <laughs> nice smile from Dan Rogers as he comes back. And hands the ball off to Cam Seneca. Seneca's going to go for a rest as well. We've got a minute four on the four on four situation. And then CTC will go shorthanded for a while. Yeah, about 20 seconds. Another save, Levasseur. Jaden Stout's rip was turned back. Another save, Lavasser. Lavasser. Murphy, he's got Josh Jordan with him. Yeah, I don't think CTC cares for Josh Jordan very much. Jaden Stout, it's a pick from Scalia de Papineau. That pass is too high, but Jones spins and catches it off the glass. Shot saved by Lavasser. That was a nice catch by Nelson Jones off the boards, because that had to be quick hand-eye coordination. Costanza's shot comes back to him, but battling for it along there are the Northmen. Jaden Stout got shoved into the goalie, but he just helped Lavasser pop back up. Obviously no ill intent there. So Maine will take their timeout with 1.15 to go in the third. Bronze medal is pretty much settled here for CTC, but we have the gold medal match coming up and that should be a beauty, a rematch of the round robin battle between the Onondaga Warriors and the Oneida Braves that was won by Oneida 12-11. There's some great players, terrific lacrosse in that game, and that will happen, the gold medal match, at 12-45. Brendan Murphy starts with it. Quick pass over to Jordan. Baker calling for a pick. There's the roll. Shot by Murphy. Bounces a bit high. He's gonna track it down. That's over and back. Here's Dan Rogers. Shoot scores! Dan Rogers on the board. And <laughs> he shares a smile with with Trevor Hill. I think he's saying, ah, he covered you. Oh no, that was Scalia de Papineau he was had on the other side. Actually, he really faked the pass and then really kind of drifted himself almost into the defender. Winds up working perfectly for Rogers who tucks it home. 20 seconds to go, it's 11 to five. 
And I think they're just going to hold on to it. Well, they'll throw it away. Our gold medal game will be here. Oh, here's a chance for Baker. Save. Kobe Gibson. Murphy's going to get a last shot. Another save. And that'll do it. The final 11 to 5 for the CTC Elite over the Maine Northman. CTC will take the bronze medal and we will decide the gold medal at 12.45, which is in, wow, 32 minutes, not very long. Come back and join us on Blue Squatch Productions for the Northeast Invitational Gold Medal Game. I'm Steven Stamp, thanks for being with us, and we will see you shortly. These traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena for a unique historical visit whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nation. Sixteen 